It's finally here. After seven years of development, Cuphead is finally here. And if you've not seen my review of it, then let me just summarize. Get this game, lube it up real good, and get it in you, because this is a bona fide piece of sweet teat meat. From the visuals to the rock-solid gameplay, this is a fantastic title through and through, and many would argue it's down to its mental and visually enthralling bosses. And let it be known, there are shed loads of these mad c Furious Fauna, Big Blue Bellends, Dickhead Dragons, this game has got it all. And it leaves us wondering, which ones are the most challenging and inventive? Well, luckily for you, Rich and I work for a company which just so happens to do lists and sh** so can really only mean one thing. With this in mind, I'm your big bold bad boy Jules here with Rich, and these are the 10 most challenging bosses in Cuphead so far. And I say so far because they're planning expansion packs, and they're gonna have 10 to 15 bosses in each. GET IT IN MY VEINS! Number 10, Ribby and Croaks. You thought battling one boss is bad, how about two? Technically they share one health bar, but there's still two of them. These two boxing buggers send out their own unique attacks, flurries of flaming fists, incendiary bees, disco balls, and, um, desk fans. Once one savagely consumes the other, you're pitted against a huge slot machine that actually pays out quite handsomely. Well, being paid in pain. Being completely invulnerable until you pull the lever, it then spits out one of three kinds of spiky donuts at you. You've got to be pixel perfect and not get flattened by these, all the while laying down as much fire on this freak show fruit machine as possible. It's one great boss to beat, and a great one to go back and ruin again. Number 9. Sally Stage Play as with nearly all the bosses in this game, Sally's stage play is a visual feast for the eyes, and while not being the most difficult of bosses, you can't deny that this isn't a great time for a dollop of wallop. For a start, this fight feels a lot different, almost like a fighting game, as she moves around the stage chasing after you with her attacks. As you do damage to her, the scenes of her play change, making for a ton of variance in the battle. Like I'd say, it's not the most challenging, but it's just so visually stimulating as you watch Sally take on different roles, die, and even become a pseudo-JRPG with signaling attacks and stagehands doing her dirty work, that it's just so goddamn fun. It's a laugh from start to finish, and is one that deserves an encore. Number 8. Hilda Berg. The first boss you fight in flight, Cuphead and or Mugman take to the skies to bring down Hilda Berg. A laughing, transforming- OH MY CHRIST WHAT THE F*** IS THAT?! Hilda has a ton of different forms, and irrelevant of whether you've got your head around which form does what, you just don't know what's coming next. After you've taken down the bull, archer, and weird gibberishy couple thing, you get the pleasure of battling- OH F***, THERE IT IS AGAIN! Now she throws everything at you, shooting stars, UFOs, all while cackling in your face. KILL IT! KILL IT WITH FIRE! Number 7. Cala Maria. Now, this saucy sea maid might seem a little bit of a pushover at first, what with her attacks being tough, but not impossible to read. But as the fight progresses, you're going to witness a bigger jump in difficulty than leaving university and finding that the job market doesn't give a f about your master's degree. Good luck out there, kids. Anyway, back on track. Once you've survived Miss Maria's fishy waftings, then things start to get a little shocking. As in, she literally gets an electric shock and gains the ability to petrify you with a Medusa-like stare. This, coupled with reels of eels spitting their spiel over your deal, will likely see your fine china chipped. It's brutal if you get caught. Then, once you smash her body, you need to traverse an obstacle course while shooting her right in the chops. It's akin to Ghost and Goblins in terms of challenge and aesthetic, and I f***ing love it! Number 6. Phantom Express Toot toot, all aboard! If you're itching to get your spook on, then why not hop on the Phantom Express? Probably the most interactive boss on this list. Stood on a small cart, you trundle alongside the Express with the ability to move your platform left and right to dodge various spooky things heading your way. Eyeballs, flying pumpkins, a sentient train, and a piston vomiting lightning, as you do, and quite the spooky scary skeleton, the Phantom Express grants you a one-way ticket to rage quit town. Nothing else in this title feels quite like it, and that's why it's here. Number 5. Rumor Honeybottom I could just stand here and yell BEES! OH NO NOT THE BEES! and go down in internet meme history with this entry, but once I'm actually going to try. Rumor Honeybottom is one bad bee and a very interesting encounter. For a start, the area is scrolling upwards all the time, meaning that the player has to be constantly aware of their position, all the while being bombarded with homing bee bombs and worker bees flitting all about the place. The ever-encroaching honey also masks your view, which can make for an overwhelming experience. And this is all before the yellow and black attack reaches Rumor herself. 
Squaring up to this behemoth is no joke, as she attempts to cut you down to size with razor blades, Mario baiting bullet bills, and some spiky fists for good measure. But if you float like a butterfly, and sting like a f***ing cup man, then you can put this monster behind you. Puns. I've got them. Number 4. Grim Matchstick You know those positively cancerous Mario levels where the stage is moving for you? Well, picture one of those, add a bottomless pit, whack a dragon on there, and you've landed this monstrosity. Grim Matchstick is one of those bosses where you've got a million things going at once, and you have to avoid everything. Not only does this mean you've got less time to actually land any hits on this big boy, you're going to be redoing this one over and over, because just as you get your head around his rhythm of attacks, he grows two more. Three great minds don't think alike, however, as if you manage to remain sky high and not burnt to a crisp, you can extinguish this one for good. Number three, the devil. Oh, you were expecting the big bad lad to be number one? Well, son, let me tell you something. While the devil himself is easily one of the most visually exciting bosses on this list, he's not the most challenging. Yet don't think for a second that he's going to go easy on you. In the opening section, he attacks with a myriad of moves, most of which fill the screen with some form of object, all the while sending little minions along the floor to f*** up your groove. Then, once you've made him shed his fur, it's time to face get it, face him proper, because he's got a giant f***ing face which excretes all manner of pain. Not only do you have to contend with this, but there's also falling flaming chips from his crumbling casino, which can do a number to your dome. If you can make it past this section, then the devil himself sheds a deadly tear as you rip him apart. It's an unsightly look for the Prince of Evil, but by God does it feel good to make the devil feel the burn in the end. Number 2. Beppy the Clown you know I said before about how Grim Matchstick had quite a lot of stuff going on? Well, Beppy the Clown's series of attacks makes that wimpy dragon's boss fight look like my social life. Absolutely barren. Not only do Beppy's attack phases get more vibrant and busy as you progress, they also get much harder. From trundling around in a dodgem to transforming into a giant chair swing thing, batting baseballs at you and rocketing a roller coaster beneath your feet, Beppy ends up throwing an entire theme park at you. Don't expect to leave this boss fight with a cuddly toy or a goldfish in a bag. Be ready for Vietnam-esque flashbacks next time you visit the funfair. And number one, King Dice. Well, f**k my dingaling, this is a King Kong of swinging dongs. A boss rush in a game which is essentially a boss rush? Yes, please. King Dice is the devil's right-hand man, and he sure knows how to roll them bones properly. His fight is broken down into you having to roll a dice in order to move up a board to finally face him. Each space you land on is a mini-boss, each portraying some form of vice, be it drinking or smoking or loving a toot of the good party powder or gambling. It's a blast to see all the love that has gone into making these short encounters, and it exemplifies what Cuphead is all about. Chaotic, colourful, c***tishly difficult, it's all here. And if you make it through King Dice's little lackeys, then you've got to take on the Rattlehead himself. Which, like finding out your dad has been hiding a second family in the basement, is no f***ing joke. You've got to pull out all the stops to avoid his conga line of cards, parry jumping all the time out of danger. It's so easy to get wrong, and it's a real test to see if you're going to flush this deckhead, or whether you'll be folded and taken down the river. Gambling metaphors, bitch! Uh, yeah, just getting a bit excited about this whole Cuphead scenario. Anyway, <clears throat> and that's our list. We hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share and subscribe and comment down below. Let us know which ones were your favourites and which were the most challenging. As always, I've been Jules. I've been Rich. And I've been very excited. Oh God, it's happening again. Call the doctor. Oh, f***. Oh.